All right, today's rehab session is about stretching and mobility for the hamstring and the posterior chain. Now, I'm going to try and explain a few things because I see a lot of people stretching their hamstring or stretching their posterior chain and really struggling with it because they're getting a lot of leg pain or neural pain and they're actually trying to stretch too many structures at one time, and especially if they've got a really tight sciatic nerve or tight posterior chain neural system, they struggle in actually stretching out the muscle and the soft tissue. So what I'm going to show you today is hamstring stretching versus what happens when you stretch with neural tension or people with high neural tension. So a lot of the time hamstring people, uh, people <laughs> doing hamstring stretches will stretch um, the leg and straighten the knee and try and come forward like this. Now, there are a lot of people who will say, I feel that in my calf. I really feel in my calf, back of my knee. And what's happening is they're too tight in all their soft tissues, all out in adhesions, all out through the back of the leg, through that sciatic nerve, or they've got a really tight sciatic nerve neural system. It might be because they've got a back old back problem they haven't dealt with and they haven't sorted out the mobility through their leg. But when they do that, if they say, I feel it in my back and my calf and my knee, but I don't feel it in my hamstring, well, you're really just tensioning up the sciatic nerve. Now, that's not going to stretch the muscle and the soft tissue much. It's just going to aggravate that nerve over a long period of time. And if you do it for too long, you can end up getting pins and needles and numbness in your foot, which is not cool. So what you've got to think about is if you're getting pain that's more in the knee and the calf, then that's neurotension. So what I like to get people doing, if they're going to do a stretch in this position, is they aim for always a bent knee. And at this point, they may go, well, I don't feel it. Like, I don't feel the hamstring. And I'd also put on a bit of plantar flexion as well. Okay, so just get a bit of plantar flexion. That'll take a bit of tension off that side of the nerve until you've addressed that issue mobility-wise with other neural flossing. So check out the neural flossing, by the way, of the, of the other video on neural flossing to help you with that. But this hamstring stuff, then what you've got to try and do is come forward. Now, most people round their back, and they're not going to get much hamstring flexibility because they've actually got a because of where the hamstring attaches into the issue of tuberosity, they've actually got a posterior rotate, not anterior, I'm sorry, they've got anterior rotate, not posterior rotate. So if you think of keeping a rear, the best way to think about that is keep a straight back. So keep a straight back, hinge at the hip, and come forward. If you start feeling back here, point the toe a little bit, bend the knee a little bit, and just try and work out what position you need to get to so you keep off the calf tension and the back of the knee, keep off the foot tension, keep the hamstring, and you'll find that you'll get more of a hamstring stretch. So that's if you're doing it up on a box or a park bench. Same rules apply if you're doing it down, perhaps in a lunge position, so, or a hip, in, hip flexion, external rotation position like this, and you're gonna come back and do a hamstring stretch like that. Make sure that you can see this is quite a good way because my knee's already bent. I'm in plantar flexion here, all I've got to work on is making sure my back doesn't round out. I've got to try and keep a straight back. So when I come back, I'm trying to get that back into, into neutral and then I'll get a really strong hamstring stretch. So I like this hamstring stretch a lot better if you can get on the ground than doing one up there. All right? If you're going on your back, same sort of rules. You know, if you're trying to stretch with one of these bands, like distraction band or a stretch band, a lot of people have it on their toe. So They'll either stretch like this sort of thing, okay? I like having it around my back, and when you do have it around your back, make sure it is on your pelvis, not on your lower back, so it's not pulling into extension. But when you're in this position, they, a lot of them have it on their toe, and they say, oh, again, I can feel it in the back of my calf, and they think they're stretching it. And then they try and you know, really overload and think that the back of the leg should be stretched like that. You want to be aiming for the posterior structures of the thigh, you need to take off that neural tension if you've got it. If you don't have neural tension, if you don't feel it, all well good. Straighten the knee, dorsiflex the foot. If you've got really good posterior chain neural flexibility, then get stuck and, and, and stretch out all those structures all in one go. That is fine. But when you've got tightness through there, you need to change it. So you'll need to work on making sure that you're not on the toe, you're on the heel if you've got high neural tension. Right? So then you can actually take a little bit of tension off in the plantar flexion part so you don't have to be forced into dorsiflexion and then you can end up bending the knee adequately and then come forward to there so I'm hitting this part a little bit better and I'm not winding up all my tension through the calf okay so that's a really good one to work on 
right, holding it there. Same rules apply, you can do it in this position as well. So if you're coming into here, keeping that back nice and straight and coming forward, which is like a QL stretch for your lower back, making sure that knee's bent, bit of plantar flexion through here and then coming forward in that, into that position there.